Hello, I'm Fabien Le Penet from Marseille, France, and I'm in third year of PhD at M2NP Laboratory in the Macrosensor and Instrumentation team. Today, I will present my work on the influence of lanthanum dioxide carbonate deposition for CO2 sensing. My work is divided in three parts. Firstly, we will see the state of the art focus on the CO2 gas sensor and the material chosen. Then, I will introduce our characterization method and expose our results. Finally, I will propose you a conclusion and some perspectives. So, what is the interest of the CO2 sensing for indoor quality air and how I detect it? As part of indoor air quality, several studies showed that the analysis of the amount of carbon dioxide, CO2, in a confined space is a good indication of air containment, and it has many applications. Indeed, with the current health crisis, the CO2 monitoring in a room could help to minimize the transmission of COVID-19. The interesting effects of CO2 on a human are exposed in the lower part. An average concentration in older air is measured approximately at 400 ppm. The first symptoms of CO2 will appear around 0.3%. Above 10%, a strong repercussions on the body are felt. Various kinds of CO2 sensors are on the market following the phenomenal detection. The most used CO2 sensor is based on air detection. It has a high selectivity and high performances for CO2 sensing. But their drawbacks are an expensive cost, an incompressible size, and a high power consumption. Due to a growing need of CO2 sensors for air monitoring, and to respond to the drawbacks of CO2 analyzers based on IR detection, the sensors based on chamber resistive material are a good alternative due to their high sensitivity, their low cost, their portability, and their low electrical consumption. So, how a chamber resistive gas sensor works. The picture at the top left presents the four main components the sensitive layer, the measuring electrode, the substrate, and the heater. At the top right, I've shown some materials used as a gas sensor. So, the operating principles are based on the measure of resistance variation induced in function of CO2 concentration. For example, for N type semiconductor, uh, and uh, donor electron, it occurs two stages before exposition and during exposition. Before exposition, we have the adsorption of the oxygen species at the metal surface, which captures the electrons. With this, we observe a constant electrical resistance. For instance, in presence of reducing gases, it appears a decrease in the absorbed oxygen density, which reacts with the reducing gas. The electron release leads to an increase in current and then to a resistance, dec resistance decrease. The curve at the bottom left presents a typical response for the most used uh, uh, n type semiconductor, SNO2, uh, tin oxide, interacting with uh, a reducing gas, for example, uh, some uh, reducing gas here. So before the exposure, the resistance are constant. When the reduced gas is introduced, the absorbed oxygen are consumed and leads to a resistance decrease up to the stability of the species. The sensor recovers the erosion level of resistance when reduced gas is off. Among the set of the material used as a CO2 sensor, the table here presents some materials based on the LA2O2 CO3. Many studies demonstrate high sensitivity. Thus, this study demonstrates a good sensitivity for a short exposure time and a lower operating temperature below 300 degrees Celsius. The first step is the study of the influence of deposit method on the electrical resistance. In order to validate the material synthesis, we have used two deposit methods, the drop coating and the screen printing. Firstly, we apply the hydroxylation reaction of lanthanum oxide, LO2O3, both from sigma aldrich, during one day to form LO2OH3 and LO2O2CO3 species. The second step is the mixture preparation. 
For the screen printing, the ink is prepared from hydroxylated powder and mashed with glycerol in mortar pillar. For the drop coating, the solution are prepared from the mix of powder, the glycerol and the thinner under magnetic steering. After the material deposition on an interdigitated electrode transducer, we applied a ter thermal treatment to eliminate the solvents. Then we attain the sensor to 450 degrees Celsius during 3 minutes on a plate to form completely LA2O2 CO3. A XRG factor has been proceeded to certify LA2O2 CO3 material and its phase. The diffractogram present on the slide has a measurement range in 2 theta achieved between 20 and 70 degrees. The set of the peaks presents the phase of LA2O2CO3 as a monoclinic phase for the both method after annealing stage without any of the lanthanum species. The scanning electron microscopy acquisition clearly illustrates the different morphologies between the both methods. Where we notice a low porosity due to the mesh process for the screen printing. In the other hand, for the drop coating, we have a high porosity. Furthermore, the film thickness measure are evaluated to 10 micrometer for the screen printing and 45 micrometer for the drop coating by a profilometer. We assume that the thick layer observation from drop cutting are induced by the macrostructure present and the evaporation of ethanol. Let's see the electrical sensor characterization. To evaluate the performance of a sensor to a CO2 exposure, we use an automated bench to control the dilution gas and the sensor environment. Thus, the test bench allows an exposure of 1 to 3 gases monitored by mass flow controllers. A humidification system generates a variable humidity 0 to 90%. The sensor is placed inside a hematic chamber on a hot page which can be heated up to 300 degrees Celsius. This uh, same chamber is placed in, uh, inside a thermostatic chamber to control the outside environment of the sensor chamber. Overall, the gas control and the data acquisition are operating by computer and source measure unit instrument. Our first experiment was to test the sensor for both metals at CO2 exposure. The operating parameters have been fixed at 219 degrees Celsius and 40% relative humidity. For the screen printing, the electrical resistance on the slide reveals an increasing response in function of the time for 400 ppm. According to the increasing response for the screen printing, we are in agreement with the literature about the intention gas film. However, for the drop printing, we are in the limit acquisition of our system due to high resistance, which can be explained by its high porosity. The following results have now focused on the screen printing film. The graphic shows the sensor response versus the time. For 5000 ppm of CO2, we observe the influence of the operating temperature on the normalized resistance with a fixed air relative humidity at 40%, where our hair is the resistance of the sensor during an air exposure, and our gas is the resistance of the sensor during an air exposure with CO2. Note that the response decrease, w decreases with the temperature. We face a temperature of 219 degrees Celsius for the other electric characterization to obtain a compromise between a high response and eliminate the noise which are induced by a high resistance at a lower temperature. According to Suzuki et al., four reactions occurred at the surface. They propose that the change in electrical resistance under CO2 exposure are explained by the equation C, which describes the replacement of the hydroxide ion by a carbonate ion. We test the sensor performance to a measuring range of CO2 concentration from 
100 ppm to 8000 ppm during 3 minutes and 40% relative humidity. For the two curves at the top, the resistance peaks in function of the time are shown, and the bottom one shows the normal resistance in function of the CO2 concentrations. The second curve represents the resistance response, including according to a power equation. The repeatability behavior has been tested for 400 ppm during 3 minutes at 219 degrees Celsius and 40% relative humidity. The curve here presents the response peaks with the normalized resistance values. The repeatability behavior is good with a high response to CO2. Let's move to the conclusion. To summarize our results, on the right, we remind you our significant results about LO2O2CO3 as a CO2 sensor. So, the morphology for the burst metal shows a lower porosity for the screen protein, which allows it to have a measurable resistance. This kind of deposit method uh, obtains a high sensitivity to CO2 and a good repeatability. In perspective, we will develop a CO2 sensor based on a micro platform with a, a lower energy consumption. I would like to thank my colleagues for their participation in this study work. The associate Professor Sandrine Bernardini and Professor Mark Bender for the supervision and the review and the editing. Laura Ludovic and Dr. Ken Pellegrino for the XRD data and our experience. Thank you for your attention. Attention.